Well, here I'm going to record my problems with uh, installing a VFD on my old US machine tool vertical mill using this particular cheap Chinese VFD. I bought the thing in June of 2018 on Amazon from the company called Vivor, V-E-V-O-R and the HY in the model number you just saw stands I think for Han Yang which of course is a Chinese operation and they like many other companies make a, 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 a lot of different VFDs and they probably are improving them or making different models from time to time. There are lots of YouTube videos and instructions on uh, the web out there about how to install a, a VFD but none of them uh, fit this particular one even though there are a lot of similarities but I don't need a similarity what I really need is some way to figure out what to do to make this thing work like I want to the manual that came with it is I don't know 20 pages long or something like that and the part that uh, that uh, shows the wiring how to wire it is fairly straightforward uh, there's one wiring terminal bar for the power wiring and a separate one for the control wiring. There are, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 outputs uh, for external controls, usually low voltage controls. Uh, and I haven't dug into that yet at all. Uh, however, I was able to understand the schematics well enough for the wiring to get it to work. When I turned it on, the first thing that came on its little screen was uh, 400 which apparently is cycles per second which was the default frequency setting why would anybody do that I don't know why why wouldn't you pick 50 or 60 uh, unless you're on board an aircraft uh, I can't imagine where you'd use 400 cycles uh, but anyway that's what they did so the thing is programmable and there are uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 different uh, program elements and they are explained here and here There are also some operation examples here, which haven't benefited me much yet. By watching a number of other YouTube videos, it became clear to me that one of the things I really need to do is to change uh, half a dozen of the parameters before I could expect any reasonable output from the thing at all. When I first started it up and the frequency read 400, I'd apparently had acceleration and deceleration rates set at 10 or 20 seconds or something like that. So the motor slowly, when I pushed the run button, slowly started up at a frequency of 1 and uh, the number started going up and up and up toward 400. The motor started to move once uh, the frequency got up to a few cycles per second uh, and, uh, and slowly rolled up to maybe, I don't know, let's say 100 RPMs or so, and then started declining as the frequency went above 60 cycles, which makes sense since it's basically a 60 cycle, 1750 RPM motor. And uh, so it went through this accelerate and decelerate thing all by itself, sort of, and uh, uh, that it didn't make much sense at the time and there was nothing in the manual to tell you in what order you needed to do things just there it was wire it up and then here are all these uh, programmable functions to change but not why and when and if and so on so uh, that's a disaster uh, it's a chinglish manual and the uh, people who decided to import the things or sell them to English-speaking parts of the world, including the U.S., uh, certainly didn't do any review of the manual to make it more 
uh, user friendly. That's for sure. Terrible, 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 in my opinion. So after thinking about it overnight for a day, I finally decided that I would go back out there have, again after having watched some YouTube videos and read some uh, internet web pages and try again. So I went out there and I set about a half a dozen of the parameters, uh, mostly uh, setting various things to 60 cycles max and uh, shortening up the acceleration and deceleration times. You know, it's kind of scary to go in there and have to push all these buttons to pick a parameter and then uh, cycle through the options and save or don't save and did it really save and so on and so on. And uh, worry about, at least for me, screwing something up but that I could never get back to where I started from. And uh, again, it's just terrible. One of the one of the things which just really was miserable, and I still don't understand, is that in this range of parameters here, uh, there's this area, and it talks about a number of the parameters. And uh, here it says default value three and default value six. I still have no idea what those mean. There are different entries in those two, so they must have some value to somebody. But what the heck are they for? Never have figured it out. Anyhow, uh, so after changing that half a dozen parameters, um, I finally got the thing to behave in a, in a method, uh, in a manner that, uh, that could possibly work. I hesitate to change motors on my mill. I've had a one and a quarter horse 60 cycle single phase motor on there since I bought the thing uh, 30, 40 years ago and took the old three phase motor that was on it off. Uh, oh, be, uh, then the reason that I'm concerned is if I put this thing on and then it misbehaves, uh, if I do a really good job of installation and really integrate it well into the whole thing and then it misbehaves, then I'll have to put it all back and so on. Whereas, uh, uh, e even though the slowest speed that my mill will go currently is 350 RPMs, uh, and that was my main reason for getting a VFD, uh, you know, I'd like to have those slower speeds for swinging big cutters and big drill bits slower, but I just put it off and put it off. At least now the thing is breadboarded up on a portable table and I've got a temporary cord to it and so on that does run off the single phase 220 and um, and it's running. So I probably will think about it some more but I just wanted to record this on my own behalf if nothing else. I'm going to kind of close here by trying to remember now which of the parameters I did change. And so if I go through the list I think there were roughly 1 to 32. I think I set up PNO2 to 60 cycles. And whether that went to this default 3 or default 6, I have no idea. I think then acceleration time PN08, I set that to 5 seconds. And the deceleration time PN09, I think I set that to 5 seconds. PN10, I think I set that from 400 down to 60 hertz. And the minimum frequency PN11, I might have set that to 60 hertz also. PN12, motor rating frequency, I'm pretty sure I set that to 60. Let's see, I'm looking down the list here. Braking and voltage and time and stuff, I didn't mess with that. Multi-segment speed frequency. I don't know what that means. Multi-segment speed 2, speed 3, speed 4. Maybe that's if you've got something connected externally. Multi-segment 5, speed frequency, speed frequency. Don't know what those mean. So those are the ones that I think I set. I'm still looking here to see if there's some way that I could make the thing read. PN01 says default, default display content. And it says 1 to 
30,000 and then it's this default three is a one and default six is a one and when I read about PN01 it says run one means it will display runtime frequency otherwise it displays motor synchronous speed I thought that one would give me RPMs and then it says two 30,000 is motor synchronous speed and then it says stop it will display frequency given by external signal no idea what that means but at any rate with this one and two I tried setting PN01 to a two and I don't remember what the display read but it certainly didn't seem to be motor speed to me maybe that's something I should try again anyway enough of that for now this is my present setup for testing my VFD right now I'm simply plugging it into 220 single phase here You can see it comes on and hopefully you can see that it's flashing 60. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Hang on, I'll turn the light off and see if it gets better. And hopefully you can see that. So now if I push the run button here, notice there's no potentiometer here like there is on many models. In fact, the manual even shows at least an outline here which would imply that you could push it to make the uh, uh, speed go up and down, but it just isn't there on this model. Okay, so if I push the run button, It goes up to speed in about five seconds. I've got this tachometer. I don't know if that's working very well. Sometimes it reads 180 and it says it's on the time tens, times 10 scale. Maybe it's because I've got fluorescent lights on. I'll try this. There. I'll try this LED light. That's pretty close. 180 would be 1800. So I'm going to try to slow it down a little bit. Now it's 41.5 cycles. Six fifty, six hundred and fifty RPMs. That's in the vicinity anyway. It does go up and down. So if I push up, back up to full speed. So now if I push stop. Okay, now if I push run again, let's see if it goes up. Okay, now, now the uh, VFD fan itself quit and it's still at 30.
So if I start it up again, it goes back to the speed that it was at. That's kind of neat anyway. Now if I'm going to push stop again, I guess the only way to get it back to full speed is to crank it back up. I guess it is good that it remembers. And at least full speed, the longer you hold the, the up and down button, the faster it goes to whichever way you're trying to get. And although I won't make a big deal out of it right now, I don't know if you can see this meter, 250 volts full scale. So if I look down here at either across either phase, this meter is showing at about probably 230 or something like that. So that's working across two different phases, same thing, and across the other phase, same thing. So at least it's producing, we know it's producing into all three phases, and that's a good thing. So I'm going to shut it off again. Okay. And now the thing has gone into, I don't know, sleep mode or whatever. But uh, this set button that's on here uh, takes you through into this program mode. And then there are all these different features that I mentioned uh, in other places in the video. And if you don't get on top of things quick enough, it reverts to where it was. So, I guess it works. I guess, oh, the one last thing let's do, let's run. And hopefully you can get a general idea. It's running counterclockwise right now, and I can push the forward reverse switch anytime I want. And it slows down in five seconds and then starts up going the other way. And of course, if I didn't like the direction that it's going uh, it, at any point, I can just switch any two of the three phase leads coming out of the VFD and it'll reverse which is which. So I haven't tried this with a load or anything like that and you can hear that my ancient motor probably from the 40, 1940s is uh, uh, kind of rattly. I don't know if it's terrible bearings or the way it's sitting on the bench but that's the way it is right now. So there's a demonstration of my VFD uh, in a test bench setup. Thank you for watching.